we welcome you to Getting Ready with Jamie Carp Ministries. class yay we're so glad that you're joining us tonight and yes you are seeing what you think you are seeing you are in our bathroom hey man so welcome to our bathroom all right this is about discipleship and that's one of the things you do in discipleship is that you come on in and you see how a person lives and you see the realness of them Yet tonight, we're going to be talking about something that has to do with water. Lots of water. Yeah. And getting clean. So, it's just very appropriate that we would be in a bathroom. So, we're so glad you're joining us tonight. And if you don't know me, my name is Jamie Cart. And we do discipleship. We're all about that. That's one of the pillars of this ministry. And just some housekeeping things. Um, if you are in the discipleship class, if you want to join the discipleship class, uh, if you're viewing this tonight and you've been viewing it for a while, some of our discipleship classes, or maybe this is your first time and you were invited and somehow God just connected you with us. We want you to be a part of this. God wants you to be a part of this. One of the last things that Jesus told his disciples was to go and make disciples. So you don't just become this disciple when you get born again. That's the beginning of it. But you have to be made into one. And there's lots of things that the Lord wants to just just to put into you and to get you to a great place in Him and to grow from faith to faith and glory to glory. So if you are interested in being a part of the discipleship classes and, and committing to that, uh, or if you already are in the class, one thing we want you to do tonight is we want you to type your name at the end of tonight, right before we go off. You can just type your name, put today's date, and type the word completed so that we will know that you have completed tonight's class. It's very important that you do that. Amen. Amen. Um, so, before we go any further... Let's get started and let's pray. Come on, pray with me. Lord, we come before you tonight and we worship you. We slow down. Take that deep breath. And you made it. You're here. You're here. You're in class. You're spending set apart time with him. And Lord, we welcome you, Holy Spirit, into this class. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to every place to be with every person who is viewing this. And that, Lord, that great alterations would happen in all of our lives tonight. That, God, that we would go from a level of faith and glory with you that we have never tapped before that God that we would we would be so focused and we on purpose focus on what you want to talk to us about what you want to download into us tonight and Lord I repent for all wrong motives for being uh, out of my love walk any kind of touchiness fretfulness Lord I repent I ask you to forgive me and Lord, I just trust you. I trust you. I trust you. And I am leaning on and locking my faith into John 14, 26. That Lord, you promised that you would bring to my remembrance and remind me of everything you've already taught me. And you would bring to my remembrance these things, Lord. And you would teach me. And Lord, 
have your way. I want to be taught tonight. I want to be taught every day of my life. So Lord, as I am being used, and I release myself to be used by you, Lord, to teach, Lord, I am in class, and I am a student also. You have complete freedom, Lord, to do whatever you need to do in me and into the ones that are watching. We just surrender. Just say that to them. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. Disciple me, Lord. Disciple me, Lord. Tell them that. Lord, disciple me. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's dance, Lord. Do you agree? I agree with you. We're going to do some things tonight. You know it's going to be different tonight because you all up in my bathroom. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, there's a lot of preparation that happens before we go online. And Pastor Dwayne, so he, he's been pushed today. So let's just give it up for Pastor Dwayne. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's running the camera. And uh, we're just glad you're here. Isn't this just fun? Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's get started. Um, first, let's, let's talk about some founda something very foundational. And some of you uh, have been through discipleship for a couple years. Some of you are brand new. Some of you have been doing it for a few months. Um, there's so many things and, that the Lord is wanting His body, His church, to know. And tonight, we're going to hit on some really great things. Great things. And so, one of the foundations that the church, I'm talking about the universal church, is that we need to understand Ephesians 2. So let's read that. I'm, right now we're going to be in Ephesians 2.10, and this is in the Amplified Classic. And it says, For we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship. So He's the one who's recreating us. He's the one who's forming us. We're not supposed to be trying to do this on our own. This is by the Holy Spirit. This is His design where He's, he's molding us. He's disciplining us. That's what a disciple is all about. We are God's own handiwork. His workmanship. Recreated in Christ Jesus. Born anew. That we may do those good works which God pre destined. You'll see inside of that word, destiny. That's where that word predestined, the root to that is destiny. So God is wanting to form you. He is wanting to mold you so that you will do the destiny that God has for you. And He's already predetermined it all. He has planned beforehand. This is the Amplified Classic. This is literally the quote. This is how it reads. He's planned beforehand for us taking paths which He prepared ahead of time. Are you getting to see something here that everything's already been prepared for you? Everything's been pre-planned for you. Everything's been predestined for you. What do we got to do? We have to obey whatever He tells us to do. No matter what it is. No matter where it's at. No matter what He says. Because on your path, there are directions from the commander-in-chief. There are specific things that he will tell you to do. And to maybe give, or to lead, or to, to have. It, I mean, it, it's whatever the commander-in-chief says. When you sign up for the army, you say, yes, sir. <laughs> sir and yes, sir. No matter what they tell you to do. Amen. So... We're in heaven's army. And we have we are truly from another place. We're just we're just strolling through this place called earth. So God has a path, a destiny for you. And in order to stay on your path, you have to obey. Sir and yes, sir it when he tells you to do things. Amen. That's how you stay on your path. That's how you keep moving on your path. Amen. He has prepared the paths ahead of time. Whose time? 
your time. Before the foundation of the earth, He has prepared it all for you. He is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. He's the one that started it and He's going to finish it all. So everything's done. It, it's already been planned and prepared. That, mean it's, that means it's done. Yet you have to obey while you're on your path. Amen. And that's part of what discipleship does is it helps form you into understanding when God's speaking to you, to understand what the things you're reading in the Word and lifting up the veil off of some amazing mysteries so that you can understand things better. Amen. So here's the condition though. We should walk in them. We should walk in the directions and the next step on our path. We should do it. But that is a conditional word, which means that you have a choice. I have a choice whether I'm going to do what God is telling me to do or not. And everyone has a choice. And everyone has a designed path. Yet we have to choose. We have to, we have to submit under the lordship, the commanding ship, the, if you will, the, the commander in chief, we have to say yes. We have to say yes over and over and over again. Amen. Amen. And it's the good life. The Bible said it is living the good life. It's not man, man, mundane. It's not average. It's not even normal. We are, we have this amazing good life on this path that our God has prepared for us. Yet we have a choice. Are you going to choose? Choose yes. Are you kidding? Yeah, choose life. Choose the good life. Choose to surrender to whatever He tells you to do. Amen. Now, everything's been prearranged and made ready for us. Again, we're in Ephesians 2.10. We're still in Ephesians 2, and now we're in verse 11. So he's talked to us about our past. He's talking to us about the things he's got ahead of us, the things that he wants us to accomplish. Then he says, therefore. So these two things, these two verses are connected, 10 and 11. Therefore, remember that at one time you were Gentiles, heathens, in the flesh, called uncircumcision by those who called themselves circumcision. So we understand that that would be the nation of Israel. That would be the Hebrew people. They are the people that are the circumcision people. And we were at one time, the Bible says, heathens in the flesh. And itself, at the circumcision is a mere mark that the Hebrew people have. And it's in their flesh made by human hands in verse 12. Remember that you were at that time separated, living apart from Jesus Christ, excluded from all part in Him, utterly estranged and outlawed. Yes, outlaws. We were outlaws from the rights of Israel as a nation. So he is talking about these paths. He's talking about these predestined, wonderful things that he has in store for us. Yet he is also connecting something that is foundational. And that is that without Jesus, we had no rights of Israel as a nation. Why is he talking to us about Israel as a nation? You know, hey, I'm, I'm a born-again New Testament believer. Yet, we're reading in the New Testament. And we're seeing here that we are connected to the nation of Israel. Let's look further. It says, it goes on, going on, utterly estranged and outlawed from the rights of Israel as a nation. And strangers with no share in the sacred compacts of the messianic promise. With no knowledge of or right in God's agreements. His covenant. And you had no hope and no promise. You were in this world without God. But now in Christ Jesus. So in order to be connected with Israel, which he is saying we're outlaws unless we're connected to Israel. Truly. He's saying here, but now in Christ Jesus, 
you who were once so far away, through, by, in, the blood of Christ has been brought near. Now let's really, really focus here. For he is himself our peace, our bond of unity and harmony. With whom? He has made us both Jew and Gentile, one body. And has broken down, has destroyed, abolished the hostile dividing wall by abolishing in his own crucified flesh the enmity. The enmity of the Jew and the Gentile. So what's happening here? He is letting us know that now Jew and Gentile is one body. There are Messianic Jews who have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Yet, the Bible tells us that we as Gentiles, when we get born again, we are grafted into Israel. Israel is Father God's wife. Amen. The church is the bride of the firstborn, Jesus. That means Israel is our mother. <laughs> and we've been grafted into her. We've been, we've been made a part of her. We are now in one body. Whose body? Jesus. Jesus has unified us as Jew and Gentile in one body. Of course, you have to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Absolutely. Yet, we were grafted into the rights of the blessings and the family of God of Israel. That's amazing. That's amazing to think about what being born again, all the wonderful things we have, but we also have been grafted in to the nation of Israel. It goes on to say that he from the two might create in himself one new man. Isn't that amazing? One new man in Christ Jesus. And it's the man of Jew and Gentile grafted in. He is the, he is the one that is the mediator. He is the, if you will, the hinge in the door. He's the thing that he is the one that connects us as one new man. Both Jew and Gentile. One new quality of humanity of the two. This is a big deal. This is a, we had no rights. We had no covenant. We had, we were outlaws. We were on the outside of this whole big deal from God. And Jesus being a Jew, he grafted us in so that we could partake of the blessings of Abraham, of all of the covenant promises in the Old Testament and the New Testament. He put us together. Is that not awesome? Amen. Amen. And it goes on and it says, and so it makes peace in verse 16. And he designed to reconcile to God both Jew and Gentile united in a single body by means of his cross. So God wants us to understand our Israeli, Hebraic, Jewish history. Your Bibles, your Bible, <laughs> your Bible in the Old Testament, of course, it's in Hebrew. And originally, your New Testament was Hebraic also, but it was translated into the Greek. Amen. So everything is traced back to Israel and our Hebraic roots. That's why we teach on the Hebraic roots is so that we can understand our Bibles. Glory to God. And let me tell you this, and I've said it before, and that is that if Jesus is your Lord, you have received Him into your life. Jesus, His Holy Spirit, lives inside of us. You are more Jewish than you are American or whatever country you're watching us from. Amen. Whether you're watching us from television, on internet, however you're watching. If you've made Jesus your Lord, He's coming back for a bride. And He's coming back as the he is coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. That is Jewish. That's one of the 12 tribes. 
And he's coming back for his people who have now, because of what Jesus has done, brought Jew and Gentile together in one new man, one new humanity. He's coming back for his people. It's his people. Yet we have to understand things from Israel and the Hebraic and boy, they need to understand some things from us about the true Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One. We both need to know each other's sides so that this one new man who is Jesus, who has brought us together, so we can truly, truly be who we are called to be, especially in these last days. Amen. So, verse 19, we're still in Ephesians 2, and it says, Therefore, you are no longer outsiders. Hallelujah. We are no longer exiles or migrants and aliens excluded from the rights of citizens. But you now share citizenship with the saints, with God's own people, the holy people, the Jewish people, consecrated and set apart for himself. And really, look at these words, consecrated and set apart say it with me consecrated and set apart for himself and you belong to god's own household you are built upon the foundation of the apostles who were jewish on the prophets who were jewish with christ jesus himself being the chief cornerstone who is and will always be jewish and we have, are being built upon the foundations of them as another stone, as another stone. We are living stones, just like Jesus. Amen, amen. That should just make you shout right there. So we now share in the citizenship of a wonderful kingdom, a wonderful kingdom to whom the king is coming back with a wonderful rescue mission to come and get his church. Amen. So, verse 21. In him, the whole structure is joined, bound, welded together harmoniously, and it continues to rise and grow and increase into a holy temple in the Lord, a sanctuary dedicated, consecrated, there's that word again, and sacred to the presence of the Lord. Verse 22. In him... And in fellowship with one another, you yourselves also are being built up into the structure with the rest to form a fixed abode, a dwelling place of God. Amen. So Ephesians 2, I, I, we could branch out on many, many things right there, but we're not going to do that tonight. What I wanted you to see is how important it is to understand that we've been grafted into Israel. And it's important that we understand our history. And we understand our history through Hebraic, through the Jewish, <laughs> through the Jewish history, because the Hebraic and Jewish history is our history. Amen. And it's also our present and it's also our future. Glory to God. And remember, Jesus is Jewish. <laughs> And he's coming back for a church. So don't you think we need to know more about our history? Yes and amen. Glory to God. So let's go a little further. Let's go on to how this is all playing out tonight. And why, uh, Sister Jamie, do you, are you in your bathroom? And why do you have us watching in your bathroom? Well, it's because of the time we're in. So this is a picture of a Jewish calendar. It's actually this calendar right here. But it's in the month of August. And if you can see right here, on the calendar, it's a Jewish calendar, but it's also called a Gregorian calendar. And that's what we use here in the United States is the Gregorian calendar. Yet on this Gregorian calendar, which is a Jewish calendar, it has on here the different times of our Jewish time. Because big things happen on God's calendar. And a Jewish calendar is God's calendar. Amen. <laughs> so... Whenever you see different colors going on on a Jewish calendar, that is a that may, you need to look at the colors because that means it is communicating something big is happening. Well, on August, this is 2020 as you're watching this, on August 2020 on the sunset of the day of 20, 320s, I hear some prophetic uh, minds going off right there. Um, 
And going on to the 21st, because numbers mean words also, so that's why I said that. This is when we had the time of, this is a close-up from 20 to 21. It's the time of Elul. It's E-L-U-L. -L. So there is a time on God's calendar, and it is called Elul. All right, so we're going to talk about a few things tonight about that so that we understand what time we are in. Elul is the last month of a Jewish calendar. Again, this is the Jewish calendar. I have it right here. Now we're in September in the time of this teaching. And if you can see, I don't know if Dwayne can kind of get as far as he can with that, but right in here, uh, tonight at the taping, this is September the 11th, 2020. The next week, you're going to start seeing here some colors show up on the calendar right through here. And that is because it is a feast of God. On the feast of Passover, some big things happened, didn't it? That's when Jesus came and he gave his entirety, any, everything he had. He laid it down for us and he died and he, he was a a living sacrifice, completely sacrificed for us and to join us again into those rites and into the, the blessings of the, the nation of Israel, as we saw in the Word. So whenever you see something on a Jewish calendar that has colors or then they don't even have symbols, that means something big is getting to happen. So next week, something big is going to happen. Yet you have these days of Elul that are going on right before. And we only have a week left of a lull. So I'm sounding the alarm to myself and to you that we're in the last week of a lull. Why is that important? Let's, let's look at it. It lulls the last month of the Jewish calendar. And why that happens is, is that the Jewish calendar starts off and it begins again. It, it actually ends in the fall. And yet, it begins in the fall also. Isn't that just something? So next week, we're going to be going over exactly what's going to be happening uh, next Friday. Absolutely. It's a week from tonight. Elul is the last month of the Jewish year. Elul lasts for 40 days because it is moving you into, when you get to the month of Elul, you are beginning the high, holy days of God. Thanks for watching Getting Ready Today. This ministry is called to reach the law and to help the bride of Christ get ready for the wedding day, which is the rapture of the church. All this is made possible through the faithful prayer and financial support of our partners and friends. If you would like to become a part of the JCM family, please contact us. Also, send us your prayer needs and praise reports. We would love to hear from you. Until next time, keep getting ready. Jesus is coming.